Coming up on Good Morning Waverly, the total number of deaths reported is still on the rise after a typhoon hit the Philippines last week. And one family is able to spend more time with each other instead of milking cows. Find out why later on in the show. And what can we expect for weather this week? We'll have your full weekend forecast. Happy Friday and good morning, Waverly. Good morning, Waverly. I'm Jacqueline Schutte. And I'm Kelsey Bemis. We'll get to our local news in just a bit, but first, let's take a look at your morning weather. Temperature outside is currently 32 degrees, relative humidity 92%. Slight wind, 2 miles per hour there, coming from the south, a dew point of 30 degrees. Now, as we carry on throughout the day, we'll see that temperature increase as well as that wind speed. 38 degrees for your high at 9 a.m., noon 46. 3 p.m. a high of 51 degrees for an overall high of 53. Mostly sunny today with a few areas of fog throughout the day. Then as we carry to tomorrow, we're going to see temperatures in the 50s, 56 degrees for your high there, about an 80% chance of rain. And Sunday is also a high of 53 degrees with another chance of rain there, 70% or so. Monday cooling down to 37, but mostly sunny. So we had a little bit of snow this week, and then it got yes. nice. and then it got nicer. It's getting a little bit nicer And now we're now. in that warmer weather, but we're going to see rain, and then we cool back down, but we'll see sun. So we got it's never, never really variety. a total win. <laughs> of course. All right, thanks, Kelsey. Tragedy struck last week as Typhoon Haiyan swept through the Philippines. An official report released yesterday stated that so far there have been 2,357 casualties, 3,491 injuries, and 77 people missing. These figures are still expected to rise as more information continues to accumulate from other disaster zone areas. Humanitarian groups and military troops from all over the world are working to rescue and feed victims. Wartburg College Pastor Ramona Bazard says giving money will be the most helpful to those affected by this natural disaster. Even college students, you know, we think of ourselves as really poor, you know, we're poor college students. I mean, to, to even take the $10 you might spend on lattes you know, or on chips or what, I mean, even if you just took the extras and said, I'm not going to have this this week because I want to send it on, $10 may not seem like a lot to you, uh, but it's huge when you add those small gifts together. And I think we probably all can give more than we think we can. To hear the full update story of the typhoon and how it affects us in the Midwest, tune in to WTV News at 7 p.m. on Monday. And if you take a closer look at two of downtown Waverly shops, you'll see that the owners share more than just neighboring businesses. This week, I took a look at two sisters and their decision to carry on a family tradition. For sisters Deb Mummelthai and JoLynn Reinhardt, owning a business in downtown Waverly has always been a dream, one that began when they were young. My sisters and I grew up around business our whole life, so I guess we kind of knew what it was like to be on a Main Street business. Mummelthai owns Love & Lace, a local florist and home decor shop. Reinhardt owns a clothing boutique called Joe Marco. The women say the shops reflect their individual styles. I like this gifts and creative. I'm an artist and she's more of a, of a fashion designer girl. So we both have our own niche. As kids, their parents owned the Tallcorn, a bar now known as the Poor House. It's really put in you as you're growing up in it. Even though at times we were always complaining that we had to work. They began their work downtown by opening Love and Lace together in 1995. Reinhardt then decided to open Joe Marco three years ago and did so with the help of her older sister. She's my baby sister. I helped her with just hooked her up with the right people for her planning, her banking, and, and then she's a very creative person, so on her own she took it after that and went for it. However, the sisters say it was their dad that taught them the skills needed to run a successful business. My dad's a very outgoing, friendly man, and it taught me how to greet people and be outgoing and friendly towards people. The customer is always number one, and um, you always treat them with respect. I'm, I'm glad you heard about it. I'm glad nice. you're here. Reinhardt's two daughters also help her run her boutique. She says that it was her dream to own a business, but that she wants them to follow their own dreams. But what I'm seeing at this place is, I think it's their dream too. <laughs> so, you know, but if it's what they want to do in their heart, I think it would be excellent. For now, the sisters say they will continue to keep doing what they love, but not without the help of each other. 
The two also have another sister who opened the Wild Carrot, a restaurant located next to Joe Marco. However, she has now sold it to a good friend. A special election will be held to fill the term of a veteran Waverly City Councilman. The town's current mayor, Bob Brunkhorst, former councilman Dwayne Little and John Campbell will all be running to fill the seat. The special election was announced after the council's longest serving member, Gary Borum, died of cancer earlier this fall. The election will be held December 17th. To honor Veterans Day, the Waverly Shell Rock Schools remembered a fallen soldier. The school district honored Dan, Dan, Donnie Nichols in a commencement on Monday. The commemoration drew in more than 700 students, teachers, and community members. Nichols was killed while serving in Afghanistan two years ago in April. He was also a WSR graduate. The Waverly City Council is considering <coughs> approving a housing proposal that could cost over $8 million. The council will meet this Monday to review a proposal for a 54-unit development to address Waverly's lack of quality, affordable housing. If the city okays the project, commissioners will ask the city to rebate almost 80% of their taxes for the next 10 years. One Waverly farmer has some new equipment to help with his daily chores. Nicole Lyons spoke with the Keekers about this new way of farming. The Keekers have been using robotic dairy farming for about a year and a half now. It's not only easier for them, but it's easier on the cows. Kevin and Cherish Keekers' lives have gotten a little easier thanks to robotic dairy farming. The Keekers have been milking their cows with robots since June 25, 2012. It's really, um, I guess it gives us a lot more flexibility. We, when we built a new facility and that, we doubled in size. Kevin's day used to start before 6 a.m. Now instead of milking the cows one by one, he can sit back and let the machine do the work. Each, each cow has a little responder that it wears on, on the leg, and that's each responder is set to that individual cow. Uh, when she comes in, the computer scans it and determines whether or not she can be milked. If she can't be milked, they'll just kick her back out and uh, she has to wait until it's time to be milked. When the cows come in to be milked, they are treated with a little bit of grain. The Keekers robotic system uses a 3D camera that picks up the milk or cluster and attaches it to the cow. All the cleaning is done inside the teacup. It, uh, when it's first attached, it sprays the hydrogen peroxide solution, and that's rinsed around the teat, and that's all rinsed out, and then it starts milking the cow. Even though he isn't milking the cows, that doesn't mean he isn't working just as hard. I usually check the computer for any any alarms or any any fetch cows I have to get or cows I have to go in and bring in and it's been long enough that they have to be milked. Uh, I basically push up feed and then mix mix feed to feed the cows and do some scraping of the, the alleyways and stuff inside the barn. When it comes down to it, this way of milking is easier on the cows. The cows don't have to wait to be milked twice a day, which means less stress on the cows and better quality of milk. Reporting for WTV, I'm Nicole Lyons. The Keekers are able to spend more time with their two boys and enjoy having a more flexible farming schedule. And coming up next in Good Morning Waverly, Small Business Saturday. Find out how shopping locally can benefit the Waverly community. And get your full weekend forecast in two minutes. Stay with us. Welcome back to Good Morning Waverly. The time is currently 10 after the hour. We'll begin with a look at your weather outside. Currently, we have a high of 32 degrees, relative humidity of 92%. A slight wind south coming from coming from the south, excuse me, two miles per hour there. Dew point of 30 degrees. Now, as we carry throughout the day, we will see temperatures increase. We'll see a high of 38 degrees around 9 a.m., 46 for your high at noon, and 51 for your high at 3 p.m. for an overall high of 53 degrees. Mostly sunny with a few areas of fog throughout the day. Now as we carry to tonight it is going to cool down there. We'll see a slight chance of showers 39 degrees for your high wind picking up 10 to 15 miles per hour. Early sunset 448 p.m. tonight and as we look at tomorrow we are going to see some chances of rain. Have about an 80 percent chance of showers there. 56 for your high 16 to 20 miles per hour. Sunrise of 703. Looking at Sunday, we're also going to see those chances for showers. We'll see a high of 53 degrees there, 70% chance of rain. Monday cooling down to 37 degrees, but mostly sunny. Then as we look further to the week, we'll also see mostly sun, but a little chilly once again. 37 for your high on Tuesday, Wednesday, a high of 42. Back to you, Jackie. 
Thanks, Kelsey. Joining us here now is Tiffany Kujan, the Special Events and Tourism Director at the Waverly Chamber of Commerce. She's here to tell us about the city's upcoming event, the Waverly Holiday Season Spectacular. And thanks for joining us, Tiffany. Thanks for having me. So, the Waverly is hosting a holiday open house next Friday and Saturday. What will be going on then? Yeah, we have a holiday open house, which is kind of the kickoff to the holiday shopping season. Uh, we, we promote it as something that is before Black Friday. It gives uh, local residents and also visitors to the community a chance to get out and shop and, uh, and see all that our local businesses have to offer this holiday shopping season. So they can get everything from gifts to light refreshments. Uh, they also have some fun activities going on. So we just encourage people to get out and shop local. What can customers expect when they're shopping in businesses that weekend? You know, I think that Waverly as a, as a community, we always have great customer service. It's always great to get out and see some local faces. And, and we have a lot of businesses participating everywhere from Teat Nursery to Joe Marcos to Love and Lace to Thompson Shoes, um, AJS Toys. You can get uh, any of the gifts on your, on your list that any of kids have, grandkids, um, husband, wife. So it's a great time to just get out, see what everybody has to offer, and, and score some special savings. A lot of the merchants will be hosting um, special discounts that day and also have refreshments and things like that available. So it should be a great fun day. Yeah, I get that Christmas shopping done early. <laughs> yeah, it's just something to kind of get people in the spirit. And it, I know it's a little early before Thanksgiving, but um, it lets them get out and beat the crowds on Black Friday and just get a head start on it. So yeah, it's a wonderful event. We welcome everybody down there. And why should shoppers go to this um, now instead of waiting later to do holiday shopping? Well, you know, it's, it's always nice to get a head start on everything, but also it's a way to uh, give back to the community and, and see what our local businesses have to offer before Black Friday. I mean, I know a lot of people wait for Black Friday, but this is a chance to, to even if you go and you just browse a little bit and you see what there is to offer and then you, you get your Black Friday deals, if that's a normal thing you do. And then you can come back and you can always see what they have again because we have a lot of different events that will be happening throughout the season this year with the retailers. So uh, they give you multiple opportunities to, to come and shop Waverly Merchants. So it's a good time. And you've done this event in the past, but it's a little different than other years. Uh, yeah, we've done Holiday Open House in the past. Um, it, we've done it in conjunction with Santa's arrival this year. However, it will not be this year. The Waverly Merchants have uh, put together a series of promotions that will allow them to have something going on uh, just about every weekend throughout the holiday season. And it allows people the opportunity to continue to come back to Waverly or shop local throughout um, from Thanksgiving all the way through Christmas. So, and then after Christmas, the after Christmas sales. So yeah, we have a lot of great things planned and it all kicks off with the holiday open house. So. And then the weekend after that open house is Small Business Saturday, which is the day after Black Friday. So what is Waverly doing for Small Business Saturday? You know, the whole week before Small Business Saturday, that's a, that's a great day to kind of shop local and, again, give back to your community and uh, support local businesses. So the whole week before, the Waverly merchants have got together, and they are doing a fill the stockings week. And so a list of participating merchants will be collecting uh, donated Christmas items or gifts, gift items of some sort, um, in their stores. and in, if you donate, you get some sort of special discount or special promotion or special gift. And then all those gifts will be donated to the Wartburg Holiday Shop. So um, it's a great partnership there. It's a great way for Waverly Merchants to kind of give back. Then that will end on Small Business Saturday, and those gifts will be collected and taken over to the, the uh, Christmas shop and donated to them. So it's kind of a, a feel good. Everybody's giving and getting in the holiday spirit and I think it will be a wonderful way to end on Small Business Saturday when we are encouraging people to come out and support those people who have been working for us throughout the year. So yeah. All right. Thanks for coming in today, Tiffany. Yeah. Thank you. And coming up next on Good Morning Waverly, we'll get in the holiday spirit a little more with Hospice's Tour of Homes. Learn more details in just a bit. And what are Shriners? Good Morning Waverly talk with a local unit to see how they're changing lives in Northeast Iowa. During the summer, we see parades that sometimes have clowns driving those little cars. Those clowns are Shriners, and they do much more for their communities than participate in these parades. This week, I sat down with the local Shriners unit to see how they've changed one family's life and what Shriners actually do. They're the best kept secret in the country, and we don't intend to be that way. We've seen them in parades with their unique hats and tiny cars, but what are Shriners? The majority of the Shrine work is working with the kids. And uh, yes, we have fun, but uh, my focus is on working with the children and helping them and helping their parents. That's why we became a Shriner. 
the Shriners group is known as the Vintage Auto Unit. In order to be a part of it, you have to have a car that's 25 years or older. Shriners run 22 children's hospitals across the country for families who are not able to use regular hospitals. Locally, Shriners help about 2,000 families across Northeast Iowa. These kids get turned down, they say they can't help them. They come to us and our doctors not only help them, they make them right. And they give these kids a chance and it's just unbelievable to be part of that. And for one family, a child is able to use his hands because of the Shriners. We didn't know, you know, what to do or where to go. And then they sent us to the hospital up there. This is Christopher. He suffers from a condition called dilactia. Simply, it means he's missing some fingers and toes. He was able to get surgery at the Shriners Hospital. I got so worried about it, I was crying, what are we going to do? And they just sent me down, don't worry about it, you know, you're taken care of. They're such wonderful people, they really are. And so sweet and nice and caring. And I mean, they just mean the world to us, they really do. They're just like our second family. <laughs> The Shriners have about 900 members in the Northeast Iowa chapter, the Vintage Auto Unit. They raise money for the hospitals through fundraisers and in the Shrine Bowl, which is in July. And coming up next in Good Morning Waverly, Cedar Valley Hospice is helping the Waverly community get in the spirit of the season with a tour of homes. And a Harlem Globetrotter wows a crowd in Honduras. We'll be back in two minutes. Welcome back to Good Morning Waverly. For those looking to get into the holiday spirit or just looking for tips for how to decorate your home for Christmas, the Cedar Valley Hospice has just the event. Joining me now is, well, can you give your title? Spiritual Care Counselor. Uh, and Bell Carpenter, Spiritual Care Counselor and Development Specialist. All right, thank you. And can you first kind of explain what does this event entail? Well, we've been, this will be our seventh annual holiday tour of homes here in Waverly. We have um, homeowners who, uh, like to decorate for Christmas and have beautiful homes and they open those up. We sell tickets in advance or you can buy tickets at the door. They are $8 in advance and you can buy those at Eckers Flowers and Greenhouse. You can buy them at Meyer Pharmacy or you can buy them at Love and Lace or at our office out on in Willow Lawn Plaza. And um, the tickets are $8 in advance, I said, and then or they can just go to the houses that they can, you know, the addresses will be published on posters that are hanging around town, and they can simply start at one of the homes, and tickets will be $10 at the door the day of the event. All right. And it's a fundraiser for our agent. We're a nonprofit agency, and so we do different fundraisers, and this is one that has um, taken off over the last uh, several years, and we are continuing to do it. Okay, and as I understand, this is the seventh annual, is that correct? It's the seventh annual. And pardon? why was that kind of started? Well, uh, it was actually, I had this idea about six, seven, about six years ago or so, and I went to Deb Mumblethigh of Love and Lace, and I said, how would you like to help me with a fundraiser that won't cost you any money? <laughs> and so she, because um, she's a very good friend of Cedar Valley Hospice, and um, so she was interested, and so I threw the idea out, and really her sister Deb, uh, I mean, or rather her sister Denise, worked in the sh at Love and Lace at the time, and her mother, Jan, as well. And so they really kind of went together and helped me find homeowners. And they, of course, people sh come in their shops so they know who likes to decorate for Christmas. And really got the ball rolling uh, on that first year. And um, we have six houses on the tour each year. And you mentioned those homeowners. What kind of interest have they had in participating in this or showcasing their home? And um, they have been very gracious to open their homes to a bunch of, you know, 200 and some strangers that will come walking through their house that night. and. Um, uh, it, it's uh, been a good reception uh, for the most part. You know, we have those people who are reluctant have said no, but for the most part, we still have been finding people who are willing to share their house and uh, their time of that evening to support Cedar Valley Hospice. Okay, and you mentioned 200 or so. What's the general kind of interest from community members to attend the event? We've had, uh, we've had very good interest. We have typically have sold around 200, a little over 200 tickets each year. Um, and um, so, that, in fact, one, I think it was last year, we had, a, I think it was 100 people who just came to the door that night and bought tickets. We were, we were pleased because we had not sold that many ahead of time. So the, the public has been very interested. Um, as long, you know, it's, there's always stuff going on, you know, so there's always other things that people can choose. It's just always trying to keep this in the back of their mind. Yeah, we want to do this. Okay. And what are some of the things that that money will go towards then? Like, towards the 
It will go toward patient um, care, help supply medications, help supply durable medical equipment, um, services that we provide to the patients. Okay, and how many participants do you hope to have in the event this year? Oh, we'd like to have over 300. If we <laughs> we've always had a little over 200, but it would always be nice to increase that number. Okay, and then can you repeat the details kind of of that event again? It is on Sunday, December 8th, which is different. We've always done it in the past, the Sunday after Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. which would be December 1st this year, but we moved it a week for a couple of reasons, one of which, uh, was a couple of the homeowners could not do December 1st this year and so we moved it to December 8th which is the, actually the second Sunday in December. Okay. It will be from 4 p.m. until 7 p.m. on that Sunday December 8th and there are six uh, houses on the tour this year and quite a variety. Um, we have one house that was built in 1900, has absolutely gorgeous woodwork in it and we have another house that's a prairie style home that was built within the last few years and so it's quite a contrast even in architecture let alone the decor that will be. And those are all house. in Waverly? They're all in Waverly. There is one home outside of town but it's not too far. Okay well thank you so much for joining thank us today. Thank you for having me. And coming up weekend events. Good Morning Waverly will help you plan your days off. And our Harlem Globetrotter takes a hard fall in Honduras. Stay with us. Welcome back to Good Morning Waverly. If you're looking to help some furry friends this weekend, you can join the Cedar Bend Humane Society for their Homeward Bound Gala this Saturday. Join them for an evening of dancing, dinner, silent, and live auction, all to help homeless animals be homeward bound. Music will be offered by the Cedar Valley Big Band. Buy your tickets at www.cedarbendhumane.org. A dunk ends with a close call for a Harlem Globetrotters basketball player. Take a look. Here you can see the team playing in Honduras, then you see player William Bull Bullard going for the dunk where he hangs on with his feet on the backboard and then suddenly the net and the pole holding it up come crashing down with him. You can see the backboard shatter around him. Bullard did get a cut near his eye, but amazingly he wasn't seriously injured. And thanks again for watching Good Morning Waverly. Next week we'll bring you a special Thanksgiving edition, then we'll return with a Christmas special Christmas on Main Special on Friday, December 13th. Have a great week, Waverly. Really.